be long, but I'm gonna bring uh, to you what I have. Uh, anybody knows me knows that everything is about expanding our knowledge, learning, uh, taking everyday situations and gleaning from them things that can help us as individuals, as families, as a community, and as a race to advance ourselves. So if I address it, it has a teaching moment or a learning moment somewhere within it. Uh, I'm not into the sensationalism, so I don't get a whole lot of play, and I'm okay with that. I told you when I started, I wasn't here to be popular. I wasn't here to be liked. I wasn't here to be famous. Uh, I was here to bring truth, to share with you the things that I have learned and developed and built um, over the course of my life. And that's what I do. <clears throat> uh, before I get started, uh, if you just uh, if you like what you hear or see, click the like button. Um, if you really like it, click the subscribe button and share it. Um, for those of you who have been with me over the years, for those of you who have come on long enough to know what we do and the level at which we do it uh, and understand the importance of resourcing, we need you to support our work and to give. Look in the description box, click the link and give or give through the organization's cash app account. Uh, with that out the way, let's talk. Oh, uh, man. Uh, wow. Uh, Brittany Reiner, Instagram model, not to be confused with in WNBA play, WNBA player Brittany Griner. Uh, Brittany Reiner um, has come out and released what, what has been labeled as a list of the prestigious names of NFL and NBA players she has slept with. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with who Brittany Reiner is, Brittany Reiner is an Instagram model that's been around for a while. Very attractive young lady, uh, but very, very poor behavior and focus of her life. Uh, don't get me wrong, because this isn't me shaming body counts. I'm not one, to, I'm definitely not one to do that. Uh, I'm not judging body counts. I never have. Uh, but your body count isn't a flex and it should never be, be viewed as a flex. Uh, male or female. Um, and um, so anyway, she uh, is probably most known now because she dated Colin Kaepernick. A lot of his wokeness came from being around her. Um, that's when he went from the low crop cut to growing the afro and all that. This was his Brittany Griner, I mean Brittany Rayner moment. Uh, she did that, but the one thing she couldn't do, he's not the only one. So, she, And she gives this list, I'm not naming all these people, but she gives this list of all these people and the thing is the reason she's doing reason the initial initial reason she's going after these guys is she's trying to get one she's trying to nail one for the sake of securing the bag now this doesn't mean she's trying to get a husband it means that she has a playbook that she is playing by that she's going to get them now if she gets you know, a husband, that that's okay, but that's not what she wants. And this is proven by what she ultimately does. But she goes through these guys, she dates them, and they hang out with her. They take her to little places and events. She's on their arm. She's eye candy. So she's on their arm. Guys love to flex when they got, you know, somebody hot that they want to show off. You know, it's a, you know, one of them bravado macho things. Uh, but anyway... So they doing that and you know, and she's she's building up and collecting bodies, right? She's stacking bodies, you know, in 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 in, re in record timing. Uh, you know, she's putting, you know, Cor and Stephens on notice, right? Okay. And what happens is she can get none of these guys in a position to where she can secure the bag. 
And so that you understand what securing the bag is, the ultimate securing the bag is marriage. Why? Because in marriage, I can get kids and I can in many states get alimony, but there's a good chance I'm gonna walk away with something close to half. That's just the way the game is stacked and the way the game is played. Uh, 80 plus percent of divorces are filed for, um, 50 percent of marriages in a divorce, 80 plus percent of those are filed for by the women and 90 percent of those are in so, some way a situation where the woman walks away with far more than what she came in with. This isn't an argument about whether or not that it's fair. That's a discussion I have for another time. This is just saying why guys are more aware of how they move and how they operate and it's getting more and more difficult to see men who are successful marry. Uh, especially the older they get. But anyway, she's trying to do this. So what this chick does is she decides to groom her youngin. So she starts hanging out at the University of Kentucky. A uh, kid named P.J. Williams. I mean, P.J. Washington, who's in the league. Who, as a matter of fact, uh, ironically, gets traded uh, on the day that she releases this list. She, he gets traded from Charlotte to uh, the Dallas Mavericks. And so he's, you know, but he's a kid at the University of Kentucky. She grooms him. She goes to his game. She's all out there. So when he hits the league and he actually signs, he gets his guaranteed money. He marries her. She gets pregnant for him. Two weeks after giving birth, she files for divorce. Because no matter how much money he's got, he's a kid. She's damn near 30. Ain't a whole lot of conversations they can have. She did what she wanted. She got what she got. And it was obvious the game was played. Her game was so smooth that Dion invited her to both Jackson State when he was there and the University of Colorado to talk to the players, to peep them on game about how it's out there. Because, see, I live in Houston, the capital of professional boppers. When I say boppers, I'm not talking about your average person who's sitting up trying to get in games, get in shows, get behind stage. I'm talking about professional women who make good money, who can put themselves in positions where they'll be where this player is at a specific time and not seem out of place. And these, it, 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 it's, it's, it's crazy how it is here. And anybody that's around professional athletes, whether it's NBA, NFL or Major League Baseball will tell you that. But anyway, so she divorces this dude and now she's out there uh, dropping a list as if it's a flex. See, here's my thing. Again, I'm not body shaming. I'm not in a position to body shame. Not by a long shot. Uh, but what I am in a position to do is talk about why it's not a flex. You know, you do what you do for, for whatever reason you do it. And with every person, it's different. You know, sometimes you're just out there and you're wilding out. You're you, 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 um, you, 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 you executing or living in your sexual liber liberalization. You, 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 you know, you, you're sexually liberal. Uh, others are searching for love and just not finding the right one and jumping from bed to bed, hoping the next one is the one because they don't understand whatever, whatever, whatever. And it's, it's all these different reasons, right? But at no point is, 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 is it a flex. It at no point is there anything to brag about, about having a high body count. Uh, I have taught this to my son. I teach this to young men. And again, this is not me judging the body count. It's the mindset surrounding the body count. Everything is a dollar now. Because that body count is going to give her more relevance, it's going to give her more ad play, it's going to give her more exposure, she's going to out there. Now, the thing is, keep in mind, she already has one kid because she got a kid from PJ Washington before she divorced him. And that's a bag for a minimum of 18 years plus whatever she gets out of divorce uh, from PJ Washington. Uh, I mean, for a very short period of time, she, you know, she, she secured a significant amount of money uh, for the long haul and if the, you know, things are managed right. Uh, you know, that's all she'll ever need for a come up because PJ's money is guaranteed. That's, that's the NBA. And so she was, she, she jumped NFL, went to NBA, smart move business wise, horrible move, morale, 
as far as morale and ethics, but that's not what we're talking about here, obviously. So then my thing is you've got a kid. And see, I don't know if you guys remember, because it's been maybe a year or so or two now. I, you know, time is flying so fast right now for me. Uh, but when they start talking about doing a Freak Nick and uh, a Kappa Beach Party documentary and all these judges and lawyers and, and company executives was getting up in a roar uh, because they didn't want to pop up on this film. Um, that, imagine that happened. All those things were happening back when everybody was using cam carters and uh, handheld digital uh temporary i mean what you call it uh disposable cameras and stuff like that so you're talking grainy images from uh technology that's nowhere as advanced as it is now and unless somebody goes out and posts it online it's not there then you're going to turn around in an age like today where digital quality is hd on top of hd clarity pixel enhancement and all that and everything you do you're automatically uploading it to the internet and what is once it's on the internet you no longer have control over it you can delete it but i guarantee you if somebody saw it somebody saved it and so now it's out there so now when your child grows up and googles whatever the google is for that age group when they get there because it may not be google uh, then, but whatever it is where they can go online and do a one two search in a matter of uh, microseconds, um, some AI advanced uh, aided technology, and, and it comes up, you're gonna see mom's body count. Not just that mom had a body count, but mom was out there bragging about her body count and the mindset of that's okay with you, the, the fact that that's okay. And this is the reason it's an issue for me. If it's one person, you just go, okay, that go that person out there flipping. It's a mindset. The things that we are willing to do for a click, for a like, for a share that won't age well, that won't be a good representation of who we are at a time, hopefully, we're growing and maturing and becoming something different. Now, some will be the same people that are 50 years old on these reality television shows, acting out drama and keeping up and kicking up. And that's who it is. And that's entertaining. And that's the thing. The problem is that doesn't have longstanding uh, significance in the way of building something worth having. Um, you'll find if you really truly look into the backgrounds of these people that they're miserable, um, that they're desperate, that they are bitter and all it leads to is more of the same. We need to be healing. We need to be in environments where we're healing, where we're trying to become whole, where we're trying to confront and deal with the things that harmed us, that hurt us, that left us broken. Instead of getting out and just saying, okay, since I got hurt, I'm gonna go out here and I'm gonna uh, do whatever to whoever and it is what it is. Uh, I'd rather get them before they get me and all the other stuff, you know, uh, better him or her than me, right? Uh, and nobody's healing. And we're talking black power without healing. We're talking black power without unity. We're talking black power without honor and character. We're talking black power without any true sense of what's going on. And these are the people who are feeding the content machine that's being funneled into our kids. And I'm telling you, we're in, an, we're, we're in a culture where we babysit our kids with devices and we think we've got these safety guards on there. I'm telling you that I put all kinds of safety guards. I got an old phone that's not connected to anything and very few apps on. I put them on YouTube, put them on the cartoon channel. I'd be damned if the cartoon's not talking about sex. You gotta be real careful because they pushing this stuff on our children. And if it's not the right thing, then their minds are being poisoned. And we are so caught up in sensationalism and being entertained and celebrity worship that we don't know how, or we don't have the impotence, or we don't have the drive or the desire to raise the standard, to challenge, anything that's harmful 
to call out the BS. Then we've got those that the moment you call BS on somebody they like, you gossiping. But they done talked about everybody under the sun, but the moment you call out their favorite person, you gossiping. That whole, we'll defend the bullshit all day long, but we won't stand and defend what's right. We won't stand up for what's necessary. We won't stand up for what's needed. We won't put our souls into the things that really truly have basis and significance and power and force to move us in the right direction. We will sit there and do absolutely jack shit, but we'll turn around and get all the way behind our favorite celebrity. Don't care what they do, how they do it. Why everybody messing with them? They just hating. Why everybody messing with them? They just sitting up there gossiping. Well, whatever happened to holding the people who are standing at the top accountable? If, you, if you're eating off of our backs, you owe us to be responsible for how you represent us and what you present to us and what we sit up and get from you. We have a right to hold you accountable. We have a right to sit up and say, I don't like how you did that. I don't think that was fair. I don't think that was uh, honorable. You have a, and, and, and we have a right to sit up and say, we expect more from the people that we are literally investing our money into. Um, and my whole thing is we need to find other things to invest our money into that actually have intrinsic value in the first place. I get it. Music is life. But if the bullshit they feeding us is death, then it's not life. If it's Molly Percocets, if it's uh, wetting you and popping a cap and, and, and peeling caps and all the other stuff that has been over the years. And it's not just this generation. We've been doing this since... Um, the late 80s where we uh, allowed gangster rap to become prevalent and it was through gangster rap that they got the idea to buy into our industry especially hip hop but also R&B and start to uh, uh, transfuse negativity into our music because a lot of our stuff was positive yeah we had for every uh, NWA it was a whole it was Tribe Called Crest it was it was uh, Diggable Planets. It was X Clan. It was you know Rock Him. It was all these people. Uh, Boogie Down Production. Um, it, it was uh, all these groups that were spitting real true knowledge, being positive, having fun, all this stuff, and it it transformed into something different. And we need to own that back. We need to take that back. But we need to look at what we allowed to happen what we are allowing to happen and we have to be willing to sit up and say you know what not on my watch this can't happen any longer i'm going to do something about it i've shown you over and over with the data uh with the empirical and pragmatic uh presentation of what's out there and we're not doing anything with it so on that note look i'm going to challenge you to get out there and do something different. I'm going to challenge you to support the work we're doing. I'm going to challenge you to be accountable and hold others accountable. And with, on that note, I'm going to get out of here. Look in the description box and show some love, show some support. We need to hit our goals this, uh, this week. On that note, I'm out. You guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day.